This is the second video over exponent properties. In the first video, I covered properties one through three. So this one's going to be starting with property number four. But first, let's go back and review what properties one through three are. In property one, when we have the same bases and we multiply our exponents, that translates to an addition in the exponent. In property two, when we divide the same bases, that translates to a subtraction in the exponent. And in, and in property three, we prove that anything to the zero power will always simplify to be one. So let's move on to exponent property number four. So this one is a to the negative m power. And we can see that we can, that other example that I left open in the introduction video. So what does something to the negative exponent actually mean? Now I have an analogy to help us remember this and to help us not make that mistake that I did point out in the introduction video. So if I have a negative exponent, I like to think of that as a bad attitude. Now, I don't like to be around people with bad attitudes, so I want to get them as far away from me as possible. So I like to think of this as kind of in a house situation. If I have somebody with a bad attitude on the main floor with me, I'm going to put them on a different floor so I get rid of that bad attitude. So I can kind of think of this like this as a fraction over one. To get rid of this bad attitude in the main floor or in the upstairs version of this house, I'm going to move my bad attitude to the opposite floor. So that leaves me with A to the positive M in the basement of my house. So whenever they move floors, that makes them happy and that gives them a positive exponent in the floor that we move them to. Now, in the numerator up here, I have to fill in the void, so we fill that in with A. One. Now we kind of have a different version of this, but it fits in with the same property. So if I have 1 over a to the negative m, that means I have a bad attitude in the basement of my house. Well, if he's in the bad attitude in the basement, then I move him upstairs to get rid of his bad attitude. So that gives me a to the positive m upstairs. Now, technically, that is over 1, but we never leave it like that because over 1 simplifies, so the best version of this is a to the m. So, the way to get rid of negative exponents or bad attitudes is to move them to the other floor, meaning the other side of the fraction. So, let me prove to you why this works the way it works, and then we'll actually do some homework examples over it. So my proof is the same proof that we used in property number two. Let me go back to it for a, a second. In property two, I used five to the sixth over five to the fourth. Here, I'm using it as five to the fourth over five to the sixth. So same thing, but I flip flop fourth. Well, that's right out what that actually means. Five to the fourth is four of them on top and five to the sixth is six of them on the bottom. And we know that these cancel out just the way they did back in property number two. Now, that leaves me with two of these five left over, but notice this time I have them left over in the denominator. That was different than last time. So I have five squared left in the denominator. Of course, everything canceled in the numerator, so that tells me I have 1 in the numerator. Now, this was proving it to you, but if I followed my property, 5 to the 4 minus 6 gives me 5 to the negative 2. And we just learned that that translates as 1 over 5 squared. So if we work this same problem two different ways, we get the proof that this thing here has to match that thing over there. And that proves to you that a negative exponent moves to the opposite side of the fraction. One more time, I want to remind you if this was an exact homework problem, you would not leave it in this format. You would simplify this as 1 over 25. But I'm just proving to you why a negative exponent actually puts it in the bottom in the first place. So, 
Let's go back to example one, and let's finally talk about what is the correct answer to this problem. Five to the negative two is not negative five squared, as I pinpointed out in the introduction video. I cannot take my negative from the exponent and move it in front of the fraction. But now using this property, we learned it is 1 over 5 squared, or 1 over 25. So the answer is 25 in the denominator, not a negative 25 that we may have thought of at first glance. Now I have two other examples here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work these on your own. So I'm going to start with example two. Y to the negative fifth times Y to the third. Now I can use the exponent property that I just learned. I can move Y to the negative fifth to the basement. But I want you to remember that we're not only focusing on the properties that we just learned, but we're focusing on all of the properties that we've learned up until this point. So I can move that to the basement, or I can tackle this problem a different way, which I'm going to do. I can go ahead and add those exponents using property number one. So I have y to the negative fifth plus three, which gives me y to the negative 2. Now, I wouldn't accept this as a final answer because I think that all final answers should absolutely not have any negative exponents or any bad attitudes. So now we can finally convert this bad attitude, and we do that by flipping him floors. So I move him to the basement. So my final answer here gives me 1 over y to the positive second power. Now this was the route that I worked this problem, but if you worked it the other way by moving it to the basement first, it would all work out to be exactly the same. So something I want to emphasize now is with all of these examples here, there's going to be multiple ways to do them. So as long as you're following the properties, Order does not matter so much. You can do it a different way than what I show you, and we both can come up with the correct answer. All right, let's move on to example three. Now, we don't have a whole lot of math in this problem because all of my bases are different. The only thing that we see that applies here is the negative exponent. But the reason that I put this problem in here is because people tend to get flip happy, meaning people see these negatives in the exponents and they tend to flip everything involved. But at this time, the thing that I want to point out is you only move the exponents with the bad attitudes. Everybody else stays in the exact same place. So I would move my x to the negative 3 downstairs. I would move my y to the negative 8 upstairs. But I'm going to leave my z to the fifth as is. He does not have a negative exponent. He does not have a bad attitude. So he stays in the floor that he's originally at. So what I have at this point of this problem is y to the eighth got moved upstairs, z to the fifth stays upstairs, and x to the third moved downstairs. So you only flip the guys with the bad attitudes. Now, I don't have anything else to do in this problem because all of my bases are different. And I do want to point out that I put the Y in front of the Z, and that's because we typically write these in alphabetical order if we ever get the chance. So I could have put it behind it, but the more proper answer is Y to the eighth in front of Z to the fifth. So because of time, I'm going to stop this video here, and in the next video, I'm going to move on to property number five.